Hey, good morning. Welcome to this session about AI and .NET. My name is Cesar Del Torre, um, and I work as Principal Program Manager in the .NET team and ML.NET team. So in today's session, we are gonna, we're going to talk about um, AI and what you can do uh, with .NET and multiple components. So uh, it's kind of a broader uh, um, uh, components than previous session about ML.NET. So we will be including uh, cognitive services as well and positioning the different technologies, even bots. So <clears throat> let's start with uh, bri very briefly for people that uh, just came to this session, what is machine learning? And uh, basically machine learning is, is uh, a way to create functions that um, it, it was very difficult to do with traditional programming. So for instance, uh, you could create a function uh, to identify objects. Uh, if this is, is this a face or not? If you were doing that in a traditional way, it would be very complex, like trying to identify if it, if it has a, a mouth or or uh, um, or uh, eyes, etc. But instead of that, <coughs> or another example would be uh, you want to uh, say what's going to be the the um, the price of the shirt. So in order to do that with artificial intelligence, you need to train a model. And so therefore, you, you provide a bunch of data uh, about faces. So you say this is a face, this is not a face. And then, uh, based on that training, the, the model would work. Okay. Um, <clears throat> something important is that uh, you need a lot of data to train uh, uh, machine learning models. So let's go to the uh, next thing. Okay, so what problems can you solve with machine learning? Um, <clears throat> there are many, many problems, and, um, and also uh, those problems are related to more technical uh, ML tasks. And this is kind of a, uh, another world for, for developers, uh, like many, many things like regression, clustering, anomaly detection, and so on. And what we want to do with Microsoft Development Technologies is to simplify uh, this from a development perspective. And instead of you know like having to learn the low level details about machine learning, um, even like uh, those formulas uh, for logistic logistic regression or or, or whatever, we just want to democratize so it is easy uh, to use AI in general for developers. So, so. Um, Let's first position the, the multiple technologies that we have uh, for AI. And uh, first of all, you could have um, technologies that you can just consume, like uh, pre-built AI. And for that, <coughs> you could use Azure Connective Services or other pre-trained models uh, like uh, Onyx, which is a standard, or Core ML or uh, Windows ML in your program. So basically, you are taking a pre-trained model and you're just running it or predicting um, or what we call the scoring and, and just use it in your application. So you're infusing uh, uh, machine learning uh, to your current applications. But you can go further because um, you can also create your own AI, your own machine learning models. So for instance, uh, we, we have uh, multiple choices. You could use Azure Machine Learning Studio or you can use machinelearning.net, ml.net, uh, or you can also uh, use uh, other deep learning uh, technologies like TensorFlow, CNTK, or Torch, right? So for today's session, I'm going to be focusing on uh, cognitive services and also on ML.NET. And, and of course, uh, and then from ML.NET, you can also uh, integrate with TensorFlow, as you saw in the previous session about ML.NET from Ankit and Gull. And finally, of course, you can use those models that, that, uh, from any client app. So it could be a bot, could be a web app, could be mobile apps, or could be uh, IoT Edge devices, right? So <clears throat> let's start with pre-built AI uh, using cognitive services. Uh, probably you saw this slide, um, uh, if you saw any presentation about cognitive services. Basically, uh, we are providing here uh, higher level uh, services that you can just use and consume like uh, computer vision or speech recognition or language understanding. And each of those kind of pillars <coughs> have multiple sub uh, services. So for instance, uh, I'm, today I'm going to be focusing on uh, uh, computer vision uh, in computer vision service and the, con and the custom uh, vision service uh, for the demos. So um, let's do a demo about that and uh, using cognitive service, computer vision and custom vision. Um, for this demo, I'm using a, <coughs> um, 
a reference application uh, forked from eShop on containers. So it's a microservice architecture based application. But then we are extending eShop on containers with uh, AI features or machine learning features. And uh, this is uh, so you can also reuse or surface all these features from multiple clients, the web or bot or, uh, uh, or, or even uh, mobile applications, right? So let's move to the, to the sample. In this case, we're going to, uh, so you see that I have here running uh, the application in Docker uh, because it's based on all, all these microservices are running on, as Docker containers, uh, right? And then uh, most of them are just like regular microservices accessing data. And some of them are, uh, are using uh, AI features. So this is the uh, application. You can see that. In the solution, you have many services, but just one is the one that we need to focus now, which is the one about um, uh, community services. So we'll come back in to the code in a minute, but I just want to show you what we can do. So this is the uh, eShop. Uh, you could buy things in, in, in the store, but the demo is, let's say, you would want to search. Uh, but you, uh, let's say the scenario would be a mobile application, you take a picture for, of something and then you want to search if the catalog has, has something like that. Or uh, in a comparable way for, for the demo, I could be searching in the internet uh, maybe for uh, Frisbees, right, like here, but maybe I'm searching a different language like uh, in Spanish, Discos Voladores, and then I don't really know, uh, I have no clue about the name of this article uh, in English, which is Frisbee. So, uh, then I might save this into, uh, into my hard drive and I could uh, search uh, using um, object uh, identification, right? So in this case, you can see that um, I'm using computer vision first. So if I provide that image, but first of all, uh, I'm going to provide like uh, an umbrella and you'll see that it's working. It's going to be connecting to com uh, computer vision in Azure, uh, which is a service that you can just use uh, out of the box uh, with a generic model. And then uh, it's just calling to that service and identifying that picture and then searching in the catalog in my application. And you see that it is searching for other umbrellas as well. But if I search for uh, the Frisbee, like this one, you can see now that it doesn't work, it doesn't find any, any Frisbee. And that's why, because that generic model is not uh, finding uh, the, th that object, it's, it's identifying that object as a, a dishware instead of a Frisbee, right? So let's go to the code and see uh, a little bit about it. Um, so, well, first of all, I want to show you why when using uh, uh, computer vision, you see that the name of, uh, of that object was identified as dishware, and that's why it didn't work uh, when searching in the catalog. So for that, you can use uh, custom vision. So before getting into custom vision, I wanna, I wanna show you um, the code about computer vision, which is just using that uh, model in, in the internet. So it's, it's basically, this is the microservice. I, I can just provide the <coughs> API keys and the URL in Azure, and then just uh, consume that and provide uh, provide a picture, and it will re respond with uh, uh, all the tags that uh, that object was identified, and that is that simple. But if we want to um, to use um, custom vision, uh, custom vision, the difference is basically two difference two differences. So one is you can train with your own images. And secondly, it can be online or it can be offline. You can generate a model, a frozen model in a file and run it in your, in your program. So um, what you can do in, in this application, uh, eShop on Containers AI is available in GitHub, uh, in .NET Architecture eShop on Containers AI. Here you can see uh, the architecture, extending eShop on Containers and so on. And then in the, in the wiki, <coughs> You see how to set it up, and one of the points is about custom vision, where the difference here is that you can uh, create your service and then upload a bunch of images that you want to train, in this case about Frisbees, and after you train it in, in, in Azure, in the internet, then you have two choices. You can 
You can run it online, like providing the key and the URL, and then just do it in a similar way than you use computer vision. Or the other way is that you generate or export uh, a, a file, a like a TensorFlow um, frozen model file, and then you can use it from your code. So for instance, in, in this case, if I use the custom vision, uh, I just uh, online, then I would, I would provide the prediction key and then I will call it with HTTP. But if I'm using custom vision offline, uh, what I need to provide is the model file name, like in this case I would download the file, which is this one, model PB, as you can see here below, model PB. So I just need to load that file in my code and then provide the image and, gen and, and then run it. So it's offline, so it could be running in this web app, could be running a, um, a mobile app, offline, et cetera, right? So that's the difference. And um, so uh, I'm gonna change and take advantage of uh, microservices and, and change uh, a variable in the containers so to use computer vision, uh, sorry, custom vision instead of computer vision. So you can see here we are changing this uh, variable to, to use, uh, sorry, this one to use custom vision offline. Right, it's gonna use custom vision offline and then just uh, restarting the Docker containers using this, um, uh, the, using custom vision. So I'm gonna run it here. You can see uh, uh, run and restart the containers. Uh, we, we might have like 12 containers. In this case, we just need to restart a couple of them. And then once it is restarted, if I go back to the application, you can see that I refresh the application and then it's using now, um, we're showing it, uh, custom vision offline. So if we search now with a Frisbee image and run it, you can see that it's identifying uh, this as a Frisbee and then we get the right results in the application, right? Uh, so about the code, as I mentioned, uh, you just need to provide the file image uh, uh, and then run it locally and uh, it can be completely offline. So let's move on to the next section. Okay. So now uh, let's talk about <coughs> custom machine learning and specifically using uh, ML.NET. So the first question is, okay, so we, you have pre-trained, pre-built machine learning. Is that enough for me, like cognitive services? Well, uh, as you might know, uh, the answer is it depends. It might fit your, uh, your needs, but sometimes you need uh, something else. So for instance, if you use cognitive services, uh, sentiment analysis service, and then you provide like this, uh, this is a great vacuum cleaner, then that's, that's a positive, right? But if you provide another sentence like this vacuum cleaner sucks so much dirt, uh, that, that will be identified as not positive and you might want to train this in a different way, right? So this is ju just one example, but uh, there are many cases where you want to uh, not just train with your data, that like you can do with custom vision, but also uh, there are other services in cognitive services that you cannot do custom training and you might also use different algorithms. Uh, so for that, in custom vision, you typically have uh, different phases. You prepare your data, you need to work with the data, uh, message the data a lot, and then you need to build and train your own model. So this is the difference um, compared to uh, pre-built um, AI. And then just run it or consume it or, or um, use it in your application, right? So uh, in a, a little bit more detail in the process is you have uh, a bunch of historic data, then you will be building your model and training with that data and then you test it, you test, you evaluate the accuracy of your models and when you think it's good, then you generate a, a file, a model file, which in the case of ML.NET is a zip file and then uh, you run it or predict or score in any application, right? So uh, you just saw a, a full session about ML.NET from Ankit and Gal. I just wanna do a very, very quick intro about it in case you just came to the session. So ML.NET is a framework first, 
uh, made for .NET developers, it's open source, it's uh, uh, especially made for developers. And uh, it's proven and extensible because we've been using these libraries internally in Microsoft for quite a few years. I know we are making it public and simplifying it with a new API. And then currently we are in v0.5 in September, so we will be uh, releasing uh, ver version 1 uh, in next year. And um, basically if we go back to the process uh, that we previously saw, you can build and train your models uh, on .NET Core or .NET Framework and by simply adding uh, the NuGet packages of .NET, ML.NET in, in your application. And uh, in the future, we will also provide a, a UI application, model builder, so you can use it uh, graphically as well. And then that zip file with your model, then you can use it in your application, which can also be .NET Core or .NET Framework. And simply by adding a, a NuGet package of ML.NET and loading that zip file and then scoring or predicting, right? So that's kind of the high-level process uh, vision. And then what, what, what can you do with ML.NET? Usually ML.NET um, uh, focuses most of all on the traditional uh, machine learning problems um, with data, uh, which is very uh, useful for the enterprise, for instance. So you can, you, can do, uh, you can identify if some data is A or B, which is binary classification, or you can uh, predict how much about something like forecasting or or uh, clustering and so on, right? So there are many problems that we can solve with machine learning, like predict a value. It would be a regression, or something is AOB, binary classification, or detect issues or problems uh, that might happen. Um, in some, for instance, in devices coming a bunch of events, then you might detect anomaly detection, and so on, right? So we want to simplify this. Uh, <clears throat> so we're showing you problems instead of ML tasks in, in all the documentation and samples. And so we make it simpler to use. So I want to do a quick demo, um, which is uh, about a regression or a forecast of uh, eShop dashboard. In this case, um, here the code. You see we have two uh, projects, because now we need to first uh, build and train the model, and then when we export the model, or we generate a zip file, then we will use it in the web application. So that's why we have two separate uh, uh, projects or applications, right? So first of all, let's use the, the console application to build and train the model. Uh, it's a console application here. You can see it's a, it's a um, uh, regular uh, console app. And then we are going to be generating two models. In this case, one is for uh, predicting forecast of sales in about specifically uh, about products. And then the second model is about um, uh, predicting or forecasting the sales for countries. So that's why we have two of them. I'm going to just go ahead and, uh, and uh, debug and talk a little bit uh, about it. You see this is the, the console app, so we're going to create a model and train it for the first model. Uh, and then we will write the zip file after that. So, so you can see in here, this is kind of the important code. Uh, uh, it's using uh, API. Uh, this is the learning pipeline. It might change in, uh, in a few weeks. But the important thing here is uh, about the concepts. So uh, first of all, you will load the file. Um, like you, you can see here, the CSV. So file with data, with all the data related to sales about uh, the products. And then in that CSV, we load it into the pipeline, and then we do a bunch of transformations. We, we need to uh, concatenate uh, data. We need to convert all the data uh, into uh, numeric vectors. And then you, we need to say what, uh, what's going to be the label or what we want to predict in the regression. And so it's just like a concatenator, a vectorizer, and, and then concatenating all the um, features. And finally, we provide the algorithm that we want to use. In this case, a fast tree uh, treated regressor. Uh, you could test and try different algorithms and see which one is, is more accurate. And finally, we train, right? So just uh, it's training now. You can see here training, and then once it, it is trained, then we generate the 
the file, right? So it just finishes, it's gonna go for the, for the second model, but basically it will finish now. And then we have the two models, okay? So these two models are generated here. If we go to Bing, debug, then you see the two models, one for the countries, one for the products. And these models, you can just copy those files into, like in, in this case, like a web application. Uh, we have the, the models copied here. And, and then I'm gonna just uh, run it. So you can see how it works. Right, so in this case, it's just a monolithic web application, but we also have the same thing to eShop on Containers AI. Uh, okay. So here's running the application. So let's try first uh, a forecast for any specific product, like Jumbo. Uh, it's searching now the products. Let's select this one. And then here, you can see here all the historic data. And then this last piece of the, of the chart is the prediction uh, of the sales forecast, right? Uh, let's do the same for country and then uh, see some code um, of what we're doing. So first of all, uh, we just need to provide what is the zip file uh, of the model for the country, and then we provide the data that we need to uh, evaluate and predict uh, or, or to use for the prediction, right? Uh, then uh, let's go uh, and predict. You see that we are providing this instance of this sample, and based on that, it will predict the forecast uh, for, for, for this country. And here we are, uh, it's uh, for the country, and then this would be the prediction. Okay, cool, so let's move on. <clears throat> so something we really wanna highlight is that ML.NET is a, is a framework first, and so it's basically uh, libraries, NuGet packages, but we will also provide tooling for it, uh, and, and it's for custom machine learning. So you can build and train, or you can then run any model. It supports .NET Core or .NET Framework, and then here are kind of the elements that you use with this API. You use transforms to uh, make transformations to uh, concatenate data within uh, the data set that you're gonna be using for the training, and then, uh, or convert to numeric vectors, uh, featureize, and so on. Then you, we have learners or algorithms, the ones you wanna use depending on the problem. And finally, uh, we are also integrating or extending ML.NET with deep learning uh, frameworks, like in this case, TensorFlow. Um, in the previous session, I think uh, you saw a demo about that. You can also go <coughs> and see the blog post that I published yesterday in the .NET blog uh, about the features in ML.NET uh, 05, and there's uh, quite a few information about the integration with ML.NET and TensorFlow, okay? I want to really highlight that this is not something just new, even when it is in preview, uh, it, we've been using internally ML.NET uh, uh, in Microsoft in products like Bing or Excel or PowerPoint or Windows 10. And yeah, just a final f highlight about ML.NET is that it's also we want to democratize custom uh, AI or custom machine learning for .NET developers. So the difference is that we are targeting uh, .NET developers uh, with ML.NET, um, uh, either for training uh, models, uh, and also we will provide in that, um, we'll provide in this democratization based on code APIs, but also on a UI tool that will be uh, releasing pre uh, soon. Um, and then finally, um, I also, want to highlight that usually in the, in the enterprise, um, you might have, uh, like the enterprise might, might be researching not just AI ML, uh, uh, but also maybe microservices and uh, bots and so on. So that's why um, we are also uh, releasing uh, this sample or this reference application that I was showing. 
So you can see that in each e on container CI is what uh, you see in the whole picture, but each e on containers, so just the uh, reference application for microservices would be the application that is uh, uh, kind of disabled here or great. And then we are extending that with uh, AI with the demos that I showed, um, and also with the bot, which is the demo that I'm going to be showing now. So before doing the demo, I want to come back to uh, the, the site of eShop on Containers AI. Right, so uh, in .NET architecture in GitHub, eShop Containers AI, you can see uh, the wiki, all the multiple uh, AI features. So for computer vision or pre-trained model, and uh, and in this case, uh, you also have a section on how you can create a bot with bot framework and extend this application or kind of surface all the information. Uh, all the AI features that we have in the app uh, with a bot. So uh, for that, you, and then this bot is not just using uh, our own services, it is also using Louis, uh, so language understanding in Azure. And here you have all, this, all the uh, setup steps, like how you can create a register in Azure and create your Louis account uh, for that. And, um, and then create and register your bot uh, in, in bot framework uh, service. And finally, how you can uh, run it and test it with the bot emulator that I'm gonna demo now and a few uh, highlights about the, about the code, right? So it's ready for you to test this demo. I'm gonna show it, run it to you. So basically, you can see that we have all these services uh, running in, in Docker in this case. Uh, all the microservices, we're going to be uh, in reality using uh, the service that are using the sales, uh, the, um, the bot, and, um, and then uh, the one about cognitive services. So let's, let's uh, try it out. So here I have the bot emulator. So the bot emulator is an app that uh, you can try locally and uh, you can um, provide the information about your uh, bot. A bot is nothing else than another web API that you can add and deploy as a service or in this case we are deploying this web API in a Docker container. And here you provide the endpoint to that web API for your bot <coughs> and the application ID and finally you just uh, try it here. So now it's uh, talking to the bot, to the web API. Here it's responding and then because it is already integrated uh, into Louis, uh, we, can, we can talk to it and it can understand um, depending on what, how we configure uh, Louis. But for instance, let's say I'm, I'm saying hello and it is responding. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, I want to I want to see products of the catalog. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Like, show me. Show me products. Uh, well, and then here we can see the categories. So I we could be kind of uh, navigating uh, across the the catalog just uh, using the typical the typical uh, flow of the, of the web form. But also here we are surfacing uh, AI features like the uh, Continuity Services Custom Vision that we, um, that we use. And if we go back to the um, web app, we see that it, it's using now Custom Vision offline, so the Frisbees uh, should work. So I can also provide through uh, the, the bot the image and then is searching uh, products about image and here we can see the frisbees again and you could enter into them or, or buy uh, etc. Right? So this is a, a demo about how you can also surface um, AI or any feature in your services uh, through a bot. Let's see the code very briefly. I'm going to stop this.
So if we go to the bot, services, and the bot is this. So we have two versions right now. We have a, a, a bot using uh, .NET Core framework and a bot using full .NET framework because the um, uh, bot framework for .NET Core is still in preview. Uh, so uh, a few months ago, we, we, we were developing with the full .NET framework. But we, we really want to use uh, the bot with, with uh, .NET Core because we want to deploy it as a container in Linux. So that's why uh, we want we want the .NET Core version. So, and then the most important code here uh, about the co uh, about the bot is this method in on turn, where you will get the message from uh, from the bot client, and then depending on the message, it will uh, redirect that into Lewis, and in Lewis uh, will send back uh, what is the, the the category of the message. Um, and then we will redirect that into, into our uh, dialogues. And then, for instance, the dialog, uh, the catalog dialog is the one that <coughs> it's also talking to the, the um, uh, custom vision uh, for the image and then querying the, um, the service with the product catalogs in the system and returning. Okay. Okay, and then something else that I want to highlight is um, about Azure Stream Analytics. So um, this is right now uh, generally available, and you can um, you can integrate machine learning and also with ML.NET uh, with uh, Stream Analytics. Uh, so Stream Analytics is uh, made so you can you can gather. Uh, thousands, millions of events uh, from devices, from uh, and then through IoT Hub, and then in real time you could also uh, create queries, and those queries could be also talking to uh, your models, and and depending on what you are predicting, you could do different different things, right? Uh, that's one way uh, of of using uh, stream analytics integrated to machine learning. A uh, very typical thing would be for Predictive maintenance, and uh, and then uh, in real time you could be you could be predicting what's going on on the devices if there's an issue, uh, and the, and then the other possibility is uh, and this is new. This is in private preview right now, uh, but you can request access in in that uh, URL uh, above. You, you can also use uh, Azure uh, Stream Analytics within an IoT device, run it on the edge, and, and gather uh, the events from the devices. In, like Let's say you have a, a Raspberry Pi uh, doing that or any other IoT uh, edge device. And you run Azure Stream Analytics internally in that device. And you can also, and this is new, could also, because this is uh, C-sharp as well, you could create a module in C-sharp, uh, which is a C-sharp function, and then use uh, ML.NET for scoring models. So any model that you created, you train uh, outside, then you could uh, reuse it in, into, within the IoT Edge device, and then on the fly you could be predicting if there's an issue or whatever, um, <clears throat> whatever the problem uh, you're solving or you're predicting, and then uh, finally uh, communicating with, with, the, with the cloud. And uh, that's almost all that I wanted to cover. Uh, so you have more resources uh, in the .NET machine learning page. Uh, also, uh, if, you're gonna, if you wanna see kind of a simple hello world, a uh, very um, easy to get started uh, samples, go to github.net machine learning samples. Um, you can also go to the ml.net page if you want to see the internals about ml.net and uh, collaborate uh, with the open source project. And also finally, you can also see this uh, broader sample based on microservices extending eShop on containers uh, with machine learning and AI in eShop on containers AI in GitHub as well. 
Um, I also want to highlight the other sessions in uh, .NET Conf uh, about ML.NET. You mm, might also have seen it, uh, the session about uh, ML.NET from Ankit and Gall. Then there's another session about cognitive services uh, using summary in apps from Veronica. And then, of course, this session that I'm just uh, presenting. And um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's answer a few uh, questions. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So it's saying, so when using, uh, when using Azure Custom Vision, uh, do you need um, the custom model in the file, in the offline, in order to you know, uh, score for the Frisbee, the demo that I did? Or, or can it also be online? Uh, yeah, so I think I, I, I said that, but yeah, it can be offline or online. So when you, when you train all those images in Azure, in the project in Azure about, uh, with Azure Custom Vision, um, you have both approaches. You can extract or export the zip file and use it offline, or you can just uh, use the key in, in Azure and the URL, and then from your service or your web application, you provide the key and the URL, and you uh, just connect to Azure to the service, and then uh, uh, use the model. Next question. Can we run ML.NET on Raspberry Pi with Windows 10 for IoT? or Raspbian OS. Uh, I think you can, you can uh, use both. Uh, I mean, basically the answer is uh, whatever you can run C Sharp uh, and .NET Core, uh, you can run ML.NET. That's the answer. So uh, in any device that you can run .NET Core, uh, you would be able to run ML.NET because it's, it's just a, a library or a, a, a set of libraries. And, um, and, and, and use it uh, through a NuGet package. Um, another question is, what kind of AI ML knowledge should I have in order to work with ML.NET? OK, that's a good question, because this is precisely um, kind of our <laughs> related to the goals of ML.NET. So our goal is that any .NET developer uh, researching uh, or yeah, with interest about AI and ML.NET, I mean uh, machine learning, could learn and do um, like uh, solve problems uh, with ML.NET. Of course, it will depend. Like you, you, without any knowledge about uh, what is machine learning, you'd be able to do basic things and solve basic problems. Maybe uh, would be a lot about uh, retry and and, uh, and see what works better for you, what algorithms and so on. Uh, if you have uh, more knowledge uh, about machine learning problems and algorithms and approaches and, and working with data, uh, then of course it, it will be uh, a lot easier. But our, our, our goal is to provide also the UI, so <clears throat> that UI tool will kind of uh, help you or drive you uh, when you don't know what to use. Because um, So you will just submit initial data, your data set, and then it will make um, um, suggestions about, hey, this data looks like you want to, uh, you, you could use it uh, for a regression, and maybe this is the value that you could be uh, predicting. And then if you want to do that, we suggest uh, this algorithm or, or this um, uh, three or four algorithms. And then you can play with that, you can try different approaches and then see uh, uh, and evaluate uh, what's going to be better and then uh, just use it. Another question is, <coughs> Will ML.NET work on the client side of a web app with Blazor, similar to TensorFlow.js? Uh, so we haven't tested that, uh, but initially it's a similar question that uh, the previous one about IoT. So uh, on any place that you can run .NET Core, uh, initially you could run also ML.NET. So potentially, uh, yes. Another question is, uh, Uh, about do you need to define a graph statically before a model can run like TensorFlow? Uh, so I'm not sure about that question. 
uh, if uh, you mean about TensorFlow. If you just send me an email and, and we can get more details, I, I, I would need more information about that. Um, what else? Can, can you see the other question? Yeah. Is there a way to, for ML.NET to leverage on GPUs for distributed training? So <coughs> GPUs are mostly used, or, or you can take advantage of GPUs most of all on, on deep learning. So, and then uh, initially in ML.NET, we target more traditional uh, machine learning problems. So we are not uh, using uh, GPU for that. Uh, but if you are using TensorFlow, for instance, then, and, and you, you train uh, TensorFlow, let's say in, in Python, then you would be using GPU, uh, but you would be using just the uh, frozen model in, in ML.NET. So initially, we are not using GPU right now. Okay, so with that, uh, we finished the session. Uh, thanks a lot for, for coming. Bye.